Um, so let me talk about the energies. The two cards that really stood out for me, first of all, we have here the two fives. And the five energies are always indicative of major sweep, like swift sweeping changes in our lives. And first of all, we have here the five of swords and the five of swords is um, the aftermath of a situation like a, a battle, an aftermath of an argument, an aftermath even of a party. OK, like dealing, reeling from and recoiling from the aftermath um, coming into the month of April, especially the beginning of April. There might be a situation where I feel like, you know, you have to pick up the pieces. You have to do the cleanup. You have to be the one where you're physically, you know, taking care of a situation. And whoever was involved, they're no longer in the picture. Okay. So what I feel is like with this card in this deck, the, the two people that, you know, in the traditional right of weight deck, the two people that walked away, they're no longer in this picture. And so what I feel is happening here is you're doing the damage control. You're doing the picking up. You're doing the cleanup. And the other people are not there. And I'm, I'm almost hearing this guy in the card saying, go figures. Of course, they're not going to be there. Why did I assume they're going to be there? Of course not. And so it's a situation where you feel like I'm kind of alone in this. I wish they would stick around and offer help. I wish they would, you know, step up. I wish they would... Um, do their diligence. I wish they would be more considerate, but here I am. And I'm the one that has to, you know, take care of it once again. So I feel like this is an ongoing uh, cyclical pattern that you've had with people in your life where you give a lot of yourself, a lot of your energy, you do a lot for other people. And yet you're not getting the compensation. And it boils down to the fact that the other people were not considerate. You know, they, they like, they came, they dined, they partied or whatever it was, and then they left. And so it, it made you feel almost like taken for granted. That's what I'm feeling. And we also have as well, the five of cups, realizing people's true colors. You know, at the end of the day, this is like uh, spilled milk. Okay. It's the wine on the carpet. Okay. The, the glass of red wine knocked over on the carpet because somebody was careless, because somebody was clumsy, because somebody um, didn't either. I'm, I'm feeling like respect the situation. So I'm seeing a lot of cleanup here that you've had to do. And I'm also feeling a situation where you might have felt like they say they're going to do this. They didn't follow through. And then I had to step up and um, kind of like, you know, the baton was was passed to me inadvertently and now I have to step up and I have to fix the situation and so there's definitely something here where somebody should have handled it but they didn't they might have told you they're going to take care of it but they didn't and so you have to be the one in charge and you have to be the one to kind of like clean up their mess and I feel like this is you moving away from that and leaving this person behind, okay? It might have been a group of people. It might have been like um, three people where you start to see their true, true colors. And you start to see that this situation is not worth my energy. Or these friendships, these social acquaintances, this environment was not good for me to be in. Because they don't uphold their end of the bargain. So we are moving away from this energy and we are transitioning. So I feel like, you know, there was a lot of, um, there was a situation here you've been contending with for quite some time. And I feel for many of you, somebody was behaving in a very childish manner, you know, kind of like the, the baby knocking over, um, things and then it spills all over the rug and all over the carpet. And it stains the carpet, stains the rug. And even if you get like a professional rug cleaner, they, they can't really get rid of the stain. That's what it feels like to me. And so you're in a predicament coming into the month of April. This is the first card out. We have here the two of swords. This is a state of reflecting on a major decision that you have to make. And we have the moon as well. Following your intuition, your intuition, and it's really weird. As soon as I move it close up, it turns really blue. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep it 
at this level so that you can see it. And there's a major glare here. Uh, there's a situation here. You've been hesitating on making a decision about for a very, very long time. And I feel like your intuition was telling you, you need to cut these people off. You need to cut these people off. And the month of April is when the, the, it's like the dawning of this revelation. Okay. It's dawned on you. Like in the past, you know, you might have been like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, casually interact with them. There's no harm done, but I feel like this is the month where your intuition is very, very glaring. It's really hard for you to ignore your intuition. This moon is very, very big. And I feel almost like, you know, that you're supposed to do this. You've been hesitant in the past. Mainly because you're like, what's the harm? But I feel like this is the month where these people might be coming into the picture and creating like, um, you know, coming to you and, and energetically leeching off you, okay? Like, oh, I need help with this, I need help with that, and just consuming a lot of your energy and a lot of your time. And once again, making promises that they don't follow through with. And you're just like, I should have known, like, I should have known better. I shouldn't have entertained that, that thought. I shouldn't have allowed them. And I feel like it's not really a relationship partner. I feel like it's more, I feel almost like childhood, you know, like high school friends, friends that might've been on the fringe of our lives. Okay. We see them often, but the emotional connection has never been reciprocated. And so I feel like, you know, the, the, the intuition is telling you that this is not worth it. This is not worth your time. These people are not highly elevated individuals. They're kind of self-absorbed, kind of selfish and taking a lot of your energy. And so don't waste your time making plans that don't, don't um, flow through. And then I also feel on the other hand, you're dealing with somebody as well. If this is a romantic partner and I'm feeling as well, um, strong air energy okay so aquarius gemini libra and water energy especially pisces um i feel like they're flaky somebody is flaky somebody has like um a very trepidatious types of energy okay so pisces cancer scorpio gemini aquarius libra and I feel like, you know, if there has been like a lot of waiting around, okay, this is a card about long distance, two of wands, waiting for a situation to come into the picture, waiting for you to be able to step out and step up into the world and to kind of like get your plans moving. But if you've been waiting for another person, there is an energy here of somebody who's not reliable, who's left you feeling kind of like put on the back burner, who didn't really follow through on what they're supposed to do. And so you have to let go of this energy. This is the month where you realize what, what it means on an energetic level to cut cord and to let go of past emotional situations that are no longer serving you. I feel like, you know, as a tarot reader, I say this all the time. We cannot move on and, and have new things come into the picture unless we sever ties with the old. And the best way that I can explain this is let's talk about nations. Okay. Like nation building. Okay. And you know, I, I hope this, this example is appropriate because I feel like it might be because, you know, Aries is the God of war, right? So let's talk about like, um, decolonization. Okay. So like, like if a country has been colonized, right. And, um, when the colonizers can no longer afford to keep that colony, they evacuate, right? Like they, they would draw their troops and they hightail it out of there because like financially it's not feasible to maintain that colony. And then if they're facing a lot of like insurgency, a lot of resistance from the local population against their rule, they're going to hightail it out of there. And what they leave behind is a power vacuum, right? So one of those militant groups, one of those insurgent groups, or one of the, 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 the ruling elites in that country will come in and fill that power vacuum, right? And so energetically, if we're talking about moving on, if we're talking about making room for the new, 
we need to create those areas of vacuum so that the universe can come in or the right people can come in and fill in those vacuums. And energetically, if we allow the universe to just kind of like naturally fill in those vacuums for us, it can create new energy, it can create new opportunities, it can create a new space for you. Okay, so I feel like many of you, this is the month where that whole concept about cord cutting, where the whole concept about letting go of the past, severing ties with the past, so that energetically you're no longer feeding into it, so that you can physically pull back your energy away from it, and that you can consolidate your energy and siphon it off to avenues and people that are better for you. So what I'm drawn to here with this card is, this is the bridge, okay? You see that little span of, that little arc? And then it, it spans across two different land mass, okay? So this is the bridge. You're definitely emerging from one space where you weren't sure you were kept in the dark. You weren't sure how somebody felt about you. You're emerging into another space, bridging that gap, going into the other landmass, finding your new area, finding your new people, finding the new opportunities that are available for you. And I feel with this moon energy, this is a very, very psychic card. It indicates as well, the bridge to get to your next destination is not going to be, you know, something that's glaring in your face and it's going to hit you, you know, like kind of like just front and center. It's something that your intuition has guided you all along. And it's something that emotionally you felt, this is something that I have to do. You're being very, like you're, you're being compelled in a very emotional way to move away in this manner, in this direction, because that's what your heart really, really wants. And so what I feel here is as much as it can be, you know, um, difficult to recoup like the sunk cost that we invested in a friendship, that we invested in a situation, we kind of need to uh, learn that sometimes if we continue in it, it's going to force us to invest a lot more. So we need to kind of like cut our losses and move forward move forward, okay? Um, I'm seeing for many of you, there might have been a situation here where there was some money lost. So I, I feel like you might have paid somebody to do something for you. They say they're going to do it. And then the end result, either they deliver in a very uh, subpar way, like they, they deliver mediocre goods or below your expectations. And you're just like, I'm not having this. I, I do feel some of you um, upset, okay? And then I also feel like some of you might have been like, you know, this was not the terms of their agreement. You need to redo it. So I feel like you're giving somebody that um, kind of like that second chance to get something done right, okay? And I feel like that might have been in a consultancy type of a situation. I'm also feeling as well, you might have paid somebody to do some type of construction as well on your house remodeling, fixing things up, uh, fixing the roof in particular. And I'm drawn to it because we have this tower card. Okay. They were supposed to fix something. And I feel like you pay good money for it. And they told you it's going to be done a certain way. And then I feel like there might have been a lot more to the story. But it's almost like, um, so for example, you have like some mold in the house and then they break down the walls and they're like, uh, there's a lot more structural damage that is um, more than meets the eye. I don't feel they're lying. I feel like they're being very truthful, but I feel like there's something here that's like be beneath the surface. It seems like, I mean, I'm seeing water damage too. So beneath the surface, it seems like there's a lot more um, work that needs to be done. Okay. Um, so if we move away from this energy, we're shifting into the end of April with a lot more positivity, okay? So let me just um, get the, the messages out of the way, where you've been and now where you're headed. So money is not an issue at all. 
money looks really really good i have here as well eight of pentacles this is like you working very hard at your craft continuing on your professional journey doing things that are expected of you so he he's creating replicas of these pentacles okay he's putting his name out there he's preparing himself to kind of like after he creates all of these things he's going to start to sell them he's going to start to market them he's going to start to you know deliver the goods so i feel for many of you you're in an environment where you know the ins and out of a work situation like the back of your hand uh, you can be in a position, we have as well the Queen of Rods, this is the Queen of Wands, this is your energy. This is a very powerful presence, okay? This is not somebody that rules other, okay? But she's a queen, and you could be male or female watching this. The queen energy is not like the King of Wands, where he's like a supervisor, a manager, um, handling other people or telling people what to do or like an authority figure. This is somebody that has the skills and the capabilities, but they choose not to oversee other people, um, like oversee the work of other people, uh, manage other people, because this queen, she's very independent. She doesn't want to sit there and babysit people and tell people, you have to do this, you have to do that, or remind people, you know, clock out uh, the, clock in when you get to work, clock out when you get to work. She doesn't have time to have those conversations, and she doesn't want to be accountable for the work that people do. So even though she has the skills and the expertise, and you know, the, um, the problem-solving skills, the troubleshooting skills, and she's like a major, major player in her work environment, because she could do the work with her eyes closed like she's done it many 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 years before she's done it many many times before so she knows intuitively how to do things without needing to consult other people she doesn't need to consult her higher ups am i doing it the right way she's already made it and she's already like she's she's already accomplished but she doesn't want to um supervise she doesn't want to that responsibility and i feel like for many of you you're kind of like the go-to person in your work environment and people really, really trust you. They have a tremendous amount of respect for you for the fair way in which you handle the situation and also for the ways in which you carry yourself. Okay? And so the next logical step here, many of you are in a position where you might be flirting with self-employment you might be in a position where you're putting your name out there putting your brand out there so that you can get into some type of a more creative work where you can manage your own hours where you can manage your own thing it's almost like um some of you might be in a work environment for a really, really long time. And you're just like, I know how to run this business. I know how everything works. I know how to handle the operational aspect, the logistical aspect, as well as the human aspect. If I were to be self-employed, if I were to, you know, start my own business, I know I would already know how to do everything. So many of you are contemplating and flirting with that idea. And I feel like there's something coming in for the month of April that will allow you to do that. And I feel like if you're thinking about, you know, I need land, I need um, uh, to rent a space, there's going to be something coming in for you that will allow you to do that. Either getting a lease for really, really cheap, getting like an office space for a really, really good price, or even being able to network and having somebody tell you, you know, uh, I'm interested in doing this. Do you want to join up with me? So somebody might be asking you for some type of a partnership. Um, and I'm seeing it, especially with this card, Two of Rods. This is some type of a uh, far away, long distance um, communication with another person partnership. But also this page of pentacles, this is an offer coming through from another person for some type of a professional or some type of a financial entanglement. Okay. And I feel like you want to do that. But once again, you like your independence so much that you're not sure if getting into a partnership is going to be good for you. If it's something that is too demanding of you because you like to do things your way. But I definitely feel like this is a situation that can work out really well. Many of you might have started a new job, okay? And 
if the new job shows up like this, page of pentacles, where you might feel like you're underemployed, where you might feel like the, the uh, financial payout is not big enough, I feel like you're going to stick with it just a little bit longer until you have the initial like seed capital or startup money in order for you to start your own business. So I definitely feel a lot of people on the verge of like 